Hello everybody and welcome to the promised lesson, the rock cycle. The rock cycle is a series of processes that create and transform the types of rocks in Earth's crust. It's very important to underline that, as we saw in the previous lesson, there are three types of rocks, sedimentary, igneous and metamorphic. Each of these rocks are formed by physical changes such as melting, cooling, eroding, compacting or deforming. We hope you enjoy the lesson. Types of rocks First, igneous rocks. Igneous rocks form when magma cools and crystallizes either at volcanoes on the surface of the earth or while the melted rock is still inside crust. They are mostly crystalline, made up of interlocking crystals and usually very hard to break. Igneous rocks can also be made in a couple of different ways. When they are formed inside of the earth, they are called intrusive or platonic igneous rocks. If they are formed outside or on the top of earth's crust, they are called extrusive or volcanic igneous rocks. Second, metamorphic rocks. Metamorphic rocks started out as other type of rock, igneous or sedimentary rocks, but have been changed as a result of intense heat and all pressure within the Earth's crust. Exposure to these extreme conditions has altered the mineralogy, texture and chemical composition of the rocks. There are two basic types of metamorphic rocks. One, foliated metamorphic rocks such as gneiss, phyllite, chest and slate, which have a layered or banded appearance that is produced by exposure to heat and directed pressure. 2. Non-foliated metamorphic rocks such as hornfields, marble, quartzite and novaiolite, which do not have a layered or banded appearance. See some examples of metamorphic rocks on the picture aside. The last but not least, sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks are formed from sediment grains deposited by water, wind or ice. They are always formed in layers, called beds or structure, and quite often contain fossil. There are three different types of sedimentary rocks, clastic, organic or biological, and chemical. Clastic sedimentary rocks, like sandstone, form from clastis or pieces of other rock. Organic sedimentary rocks, like coal, form from hard biological materials like plants, shells and bones that are compressed into rock. Chemical sedimentary rocks, like rock salt and some limestone form when dissolved material precipitate from solution. Look at the picture aside to see some more examples of sedimentary rocks. Rock cycle processes. We learned about the three rock types, igneous, sedimentary and metamorphic. We also learned that all of these rocks can change. These changes are all part of the rock cycle. The rock cycle describes each of the main types of rocks, how they form and how they change. Over thousands of millions of years, rocks are broken down, moved around and deposited in different places. Rocks can be compacted together and pushed deep into the earth where they are melted or deformed by intense heat and pressure, only to be uplifted again to the surface. All of these processes combine to make the rock cycle. Let's look at the concept of rock cycle processes. 1. Weathering Weathering is the breakdown of rocks at the Earth's surface by the action of rainwater, extreme of temperature and biological activity. It does not involve the removal of rock material. There are three types of weathering, physical, chemical and biological. Erosion and transport Erosion is the process by which soil and rock particles are worn away and moved elsewhere by wind, water or ice. Remember, weathering involves no moving agent of transport. Transport refers to the cycle processes by which the sediment is moved along. For example, people rolled around a river bed or seashore, sand grains whipped up by the wind and salts carried in solution. 
deposition. Deposition is the laying down of sediment carried by wind, water or ice. Sediment can be transported as pebbles, sand and mud, or as salts dissolved in water. Salts may later be deposited by organic activity, for example, as seashells, or by evaporation. Burial and compaction. As layers are peeled one upon another, the sediment beneath are buried sometimes by hundreds of meters of sediment above. The weight of these layers compacts the sediment grains. Minerals deposited from water in spaces between the sediment grains gradually cements them together. Deformation and metamorphism. The Earth's crust is slowly moving. Did you know that the Atlantic Ocean is getting wider at about the rate your fingernails grow, or that India is burning its way slowly northward into the continent of Asia? The huge forces that move continents stretch and squash parts of the Earth's crust, generating earthquakes and building mountains. They cause rocks near the surface to be fractured and faulted. At greater depth, the heat and pressure involved can cause folding and or metamorphism. Uplift Uplift is the key to the rock cycle as it allows us to see rocks that were once deeply buried beneath the surface. If rocks did not get uplifted to form hills and mountains, then the processes of weathering and erosion would long ago have reduced much of the world's land masses to low flying flat plains. Weathering and erosion, transport and deposition would all effectively stop. Mount Everest is made of limestone that must have been originally formed on an ancient sea floor because it contains fossils of marine creatures. Melting Rocks are made up of different minerals that have different melting points. When hot rocks begin to melt, deep down beneath the surface, some of the minerals start to melt but others stay solid. The rock of the Earth's mantle layer only begins to melt in a few zones where it is disturbed in some way. Rocks melt because of the heat beneath the Earth's surface as well as other factors such as changes in pressure or the presence of water within the rock. Magma reaches the surface because of pressure that squeezes the rock like a sponge, forcing the melted material to rise toward the surface. Crystallization of magma When crystals form from magma, it is called crystallization. Magma can have different composition depending on how it was formed. Magma also varies in temperature and in how much dissolved gas it contains. All of these factors control the viscosity of the magma, whether it's relatively runny or very thick and sticky. Viscosity, in turn, controls how magma behaves as it rises through the crust and erupts at the surface. The rate at which magma cools controls the grain size of the igneous rock that is formed. More rapid cooling produces finer grained rocks. As we've already seen, the concept of the main processes that make the rock cycle, let's now describe it. 1. Weathering breaks down rocks on the surface of the earth. Wind and water move the broken rock particles away. This is called erosion. 2. Rivers and streams transport rock particles to other places. Rock particles are deposited in lakes and seas. 3. Rock particles form layers. 4. Compaction and cementation press the layers and steep the particles together. This creates sedimentary rock. 5. Rocks underground get heated and put under pressure and are changed into metamorphic rock. 6. Rocks underground that get heated so much, they melt and turn into magma. Magma also comes from deeper inside the earth, from a region called mantle. Pressure can force magma out of the ground, creating a volcano. 
when the magma cools quickly, it turns into solid extrusive igneous rock. Magma that cools slowly underground forms solid intrusive igneous rock. 7. Areas of rock can move slowly upwards, pushed up by pressure of the rocks forming underneath. This is called uplift. The rock cycle really has no beginning or end, it just continues. The processes involved in the rock cycle take place over hundreds, thousands or even millions of years. Even though for us rocks are solid and unchanging, they slowly change all the time. If you enjoyed the lesson, please put your like and make your comments. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you may not miss the next lessons.